I, I, I love this guy. This, he's like the patron saint of refused callings. <laughs> and uh, here's the Cliff Notes version, okay? Um, he gets a calling, essentially to be a public speaker, wants no part of it, books himself passage on a ship heading in the exact geographically opposite direction from where he's called to be, and goes to sleep in the bottom of the boat. It's into a, actually a section of the boat called the hold. I'm probably reading too much into this, but that's <laughs> something that I do. Um, and uh, this is also a state that psychologists today tend to refer to as denial. Okay? So God is not amused uh, or fooled sends a storm down on the ship, I think not so much as punishment, if I'm reading this right, as much as a way of extracting a somewhat more affirmative response from our hero. Okay? Um, then the captain goes around to all the crew members and says, if you have a god, pray to that god now. And if you have any amends to make to that god, make them now. Then he finds Jonah fast asleep in the bottom of the boat and, critical plot twist, wakes him up and asks him if he has anything to do with what's going on upstairs. And at this point, Jonah proves himself to be a man of, of real courage because what he does is he takes responsibility for the calling that belongs to him and the consequences that befell the entire community as a result of him refusing it. See, this is one of my, my points is you alone are called but you are not the only one affected by your choice of response. In a very real sense, I think callings are community property. They are. Because you belong to a community, whether it's a, a, a relationship, a marriage, a partnership, or whether it's a men's group, a women's group, um, uh, you belong to a staff, you own a company, uh, you belong to a church. All of the, you know, callings, the community is affected by your choice of response. They are either inspired or dispirited. Right? Um, so, um, Jonah says, only way to make the storm subside, toss me overboard, which they initially re uh, refuse to do, but then they, the storm gets worse. They throw him overboard, remember this part, into the belly of the whale, who takes him back to where he was originally called to be, and rather unceremoniously pukes him up onto the beach. <laughs> um, a changed man, though. And, and a man certainly in need of a change of clothing, I would imagine. Um, but you know, the character that I want to focus on here for, for the purposes of this discussion is not Jonah. Th the character I want to focus on is the captain. Because I think it's probably fair to say, in, in psychological parlance, that the, the captain represents the spirit of wakefulness in the story. The part of Jonah that was capable of waking up. Or never went to sleep to start with. Right? And it is my opinion that what separates successful venturers from unsuccessful venturers may be largely the willingness to, to activate the inner captain, to really activate the voice of yes, the voice of wakefulness inside of us. I think that may be a make or break difference. Um, I'm going to skip since I've got 10 minutes. Thank you, Gaddy. Um, so, these are the voices going on inside us. The voice of resistance, the voice of no, if you will, and the voice of yes. All right? And I think it is um, a, the better part of valor to hold the tension between those two. In fact, I've, I've, I've heard this said. Heroism, or heroinism, can be redefined for the modern age as the ability to tolerate paradox. In other words to hold the tension between competing ideas or impulses or energies or beliefs inside of you at the same time and still retain the ability to function. Right? So yes and no. Faith and fear. Uh, head and heart. To hold them both. And if your head is anything like mine, you can, you can count on the head to counsel you in these kind of matters by saying things like, have you taken a look at your savings account lately? You know? Uh, or you can't even organize your desk, no less a whole team of people. 
You know, these kind of things. Uh, you know, uh, and there's nothing inherently actually wrong with some of these voices. It's just that's just what the head specializes in, is the critical and the examining and the cogitating and the, um, and the devil's advocacy and all that. And you can count on the heart to say, where would the world be if all of its heroes follow the bottom line? Back and forth, back and forth. One party wants to awaken, one party wants to sleep. One party wants to follow the call, the other wants to run like hell. Right? And for perfectly sound reasons. Um, so, so this ability to hold the tension between the two is critical. And these two, by the way, these two energies don't uh, sort of energetically cancel each other out. They are both true simultaneously. Both need to be brought to the bargaining table to hammer out some kind of treaty that's going to serve both of them rather than stuffing one or the other under the floorboards just to be rid of the tension, just to be rid of the conflict. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Tolkien said, it does not do you any good to leave a dragon out of your calculations if you live near him. <laughs> this is really a statement about holding the, holding the tension. You know? And frankly, the ability to hold paradox um, builds tremendous resilience into people, as well as organizations. The, the, the ability, the willingness to hold the tension and to just, until uh, the two sides start to um, inform each other and inspire each other and educate each other, to hold the tension. Um, this is critical um, because I think that it, this ability mitigates naturally against tyranny. It's my opinion whether it's within a person or between people. Because what it does is it refuses to elevate one at the expense of the other. All right? It, 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 it holds the tension and holds the, the competing emotions, the competing constituencies just within you until they can begin to uh, literally educate each other. The word, of course, meaning to draw out. All right? Um, so, if Prigogine is right, if Prigogine is right, then this ability, this, um, the friction, the disturbance, the boat rocking, um, is yeast for the bread. Is yeast for the bread, all right? Um, not only do the two forces not cancel each other out, they're useful to one another.